You ever see the movie Unbroken? It's about a man named Louis Zamperini who I got to meet and interview for an entire day a few years ago. And he, in my opinion, was the epitome of a man in the traditional sense. Today, in order to prove my masculinity, I will be attempting to open the bottle of this Jefferson bourbon. It's delicious if you've ever had it. Oh yeah. I am Jason, if you're new to the channel, check it out. I have a lot of videos about tobacco pipes, cigars, bourbon, and me and my pursuits at becoming the kind of man that I want to be. The kind of man that, well, Louis Zamperini, I think, exemplarated. Nope, that's not the right word. I'm also trying to learn new words like exemplarated, which, is that even a word? Dang, it's good. If you, like me, uh, see yourself as pretty weak, timid, shy, soft, weak, fat, lazy, just not the man that you ought to be, and you want to become the man that your wife, your kids, your family, your community deserves and needs, check out the link in the description. It goes to a Discord that is completely free where myself and some other men have grouped together to work together to make themselves the men our country really needs today. Let's talk about Louis Zamperini. So I work in the world of making videos and uh, I got to go to Louis Zamperini's home in the Hollywood Hills of California. I got to spend the whole day with him, myself and three other people, just asking him about his life and what a life he lived. We shot down all three zeros, but not before taking him on about just under 600 bullet holes. All the men aboard were, were, were hit. Seriously, I, and I down low, I'm gonna hit the water. So I thought, well, this is it. I won't go into his backstory. I did shoot uh, eight videos about his life, so I probably will sprinkle some of that into this video so you can get an idea of who he was and what he went through, but you, you, I, I couldn't move, couldn't budge. I took a breath of air from the top, and I began to sink, and then I felt uh, uh, my ears pop, which meant I was down 20 feet. I don't know how to explain it. The stuff he went through is just mind-boggling. It was always the same. With the bird, it was, he looked for ways to punish you every day, and especially me, and he always singled me out. Read the book Unbroken. It's by, I forget her name, but it's the same woman who wrote Seabiscuit. I didn't read the book because I talked to the man himself. I'm pretty special like that. A few things stood out to me from that day meeting Louis Zamperini. Actually, two in particular. Three. Three that I'll discuss. The first was that he could care less about what you thought about anything. He was extremely secure and confident in who he was and what he thought about the world. Your problems in your life, you've got to take the bull by the horns and, and uh, go for it. The second thing I saw in him, I guess there's four things really. The second thing was something he said during the interviews and that was that he did not put much value in movies. Seems like a weird thing to say, but he talked about this for so long and with such vigor, it stood out to me. I mean, he was born in, ah, dang. When were the Olympics in Germany? He raced in those Olympic games and actually has a, an insane story about pulling a Nazi flag from the flagpole during the Olympics. And I actually got to see and hold that flag because it was in his house. More on that and how it applies to me today and I think men in general in a moment. The third thing that he did. It was actually something he did, not something that he said. We finished the interview. We had been talking to him for probably six hours or so, spent the majority of the day with him. So we're packing up after, like I said, a long day of interviewing. And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're just interviewed for a long period of time. They're just, they're draining. We're exhausted. We're getting in the, in the van. We want to just go back to the hotel and crash. Well, we see him leave his house and he has a chainsaw in his hand and a stepladder. And he climbs up this stepladder with the chainsaw in hand and starts limbing this tree in his front yard. I I've never felt like less of a man than in that moment as this 90 year old, after this long day of interviews, on top of days of interviews, goes out with a chainsaw and starts limbing his trees. The fourth thing that happened that day is um, I came up to the van with the last load of gear, of camera gear, and I realized we had left something in his house. So I just went down by myself, 
back down to his house, knocked on the door. Everybody else had gone. It was literally just me and Louis Zamperini. And I went down and knocked at his door and I said, hey, sorry to bug you. We, we left something. And he was like, no problem. I went in there, grabbed the piece of gear. And on my way out, he was by the door. I walked by him. And I'll never forget this. It's, it was so significant. He put his hand on my shoulder and said, Jason, you're going to be all right. I don't know what that even meant necessarily. I hadn't really talked to him much about me personally, but I think coming from that caliber of person and character and knowing what he had gone through impacted me tremendously. So let's break down those four things that stood out to me and apply them to myself. And I think probably to most men today, it's something we can all learn from. Okay, so the first thing was his strong convictions. It was very clear from the get-go, from the first time we met him, that he knew what he believed in, what he thought about things, and there was no debate. He saw more in one year of his life than I could ever hope. I I hope I never have to go through or think about or even... I can't can't describe to you what this guy went through. Um, It's hard if you don't know his story. This video is not going to mean much. I would really encourage you, uh, watch a a YouTube video about him or an interview or read the book. Uh, It's mind blowing what he went through and his outlook and and what came of all of that. But the strength of his convictions was remarkable. It made me question what I really believe and how hard do I really believe it? How much do I really believe it? He believed in his convictions so much his entire life emulated and aligned with his convictions. So much so that you wouldn't even need to talk to him to understand what he thought about things. I mean, you could look around his house. I think if you spent any kind of time with him at all, even if he didn't talk directly about what he thought about things, you knew because he lived it. And that's something that I know in my own life uh, for a long, long time was not true and still isn't true. You know, I mean, I think so many of us, we talk a big game and we complain a lot. But if you look at our actual life and where we spend our time, it doesn't align with what we say we value. I think that one of the issues as men today we need to work on is aligning our time with our convictions, aligning our time with our words. Second thing was he talked about movies and how he didn't value movies at all. Really his point was that he saw them as a waste of time. Actually, as I think about it, it goes back to the same thing as the first, is how we spend our time. Whether you realize it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, I mean, maybe you're the exception, but most of us waste most of our time throughout the day. We, we make excuses about not having time to do things, but that is just an excuse, absolute excuse, because... Everybody who's done anything significant in this world has had the same amount of time as you and probably less of it. Complaining about not having enough time is idiotic and you're stupid for using that as an excuse. I don't mean to be harsh or negative, but that's a stupid excuse. Time, you you have plenty of it. Ample time to change the world if you use your time wisely. And I guess really when you think about it, that is the most important thing that we have is our time and we use it really poorly. Again, I guess I'm just repeating myself from the last point. I never realized how connected those two things were until right now. Huh, that's interesting. I guess what I've learned from Louis Zamperini the most, as of right now anyways, is that he used his time wisely. His time was connected to his words and the things that he said he cared about, things that he said mattered to him. He actually backed up with his life. That's pretty good. Where'd my drink go? The next thing was him walking out with a chainsaw and a stepladder. And that to me, what I pulled from that was uh, a pretty common trait that's been lost in our culture today. And that is a work ethic. Which again, if you think about it, what is work? If you break down what work is, work is sacrifice. Work is delaying pleasure in the moment to build something for the future. I've got a note for this from Jordan Peterson. Work is sacrifice. Sacrifice of the present to the future. Delay of gratification. It's maturity. 
sacrifice to something and for something. Truly, I've never thought about it this way till I've sat down and made this video, but it kind of is aligned with the first two, which is time. He used his time wisely. He had an extremely good work ethic, which meant that he was sacrificing. His future satisfaction, his future pleasure for a gain down the road. That's what a work ethic is. Work is sacrifice. A work ethic is understanding that sacrifice and making those sacrifices consistently, which at its root gets back to using our time wisely. Holy cow. That's great. That's interesting. Last point. Let's see if this aligns with time also. If it does, I did not make that connection prior to writing the outline for this video. So the last thing I took away from my interaction with Louis Zamperini was when it was just myself and him alone in his house and I was leaving and he put his hand on my back and just kind of, you know, patted my shoulder. It was a brief moment that we were together. I ran in, grabbed a battery or whatever it was and ran out the door real quick because I didn't want to bother him anymore. We had already spent so much time with him. And he was the one that put his arm around me, kind of slowed me down for a sec and said those simple words. And they have stuck with me ever since and have meant so much to me. I, I mean, really that, that again comes Dang, it does. That comes back to time because when I'm out and about, when I'm running errands, I'm in a kind of frantic, crazy. I just want to get this done. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm not using it. Dang, that's okay. Well, I just learned a lot. That is my number one takeaway then that I just kind of realized from Louis Zamperini. So I guess you could say looking at what a, to me, the perfect example of what a man should be is a man who uses his time well whose time aligns with that man's convictions and that man's words, that you can see it. I guess it goes back to actions speak louder than words. That's funny. I mean, that's, I truly, I'd never noticed that. I never connected those things. Those were the four things that always stuck out to me. Stuck out to me? Did I just say stuck out? Stood out to me? But I never connected them and didn't realize those were all the same thing in a way. How we use our time. Holy cow. So what do you have planned today? What are you actually going to do? How much time are you going to waste? Whose life are you not going to impact today because you're in a rush? Those are questions I need to ask myself. If you like this kind of content, this channel's full of it. This is what I'm pursuing and going after. Um, if you would help me get this channel out to more people, subscribe, comment, share, all those things that YouTube wants you to do. And, uh, and also, if you want to take the next step and really take action and actually change your life as I'm trying to do and a bunch of other guys are trying to do, uh, there's a link to a Discord in the description below this video. Click on that and you can check out what we're doing. I think it's a very cool thing. Uh, anyways. Wow. That was pretty good. That was a good video. Yeah.